viewers all over the world, the Lord be with your spirit. Welcome to the University of God program today. The Lord has put in our heart to give you these special messages because we are in a special time. The scriptures say we are living in perilous time. Perilous time at times very difficult to deal with. When you sit down and look at your own problem, you begin to ask yourself, what is the way out? When you look through your windows into the street, what you see is frightening. When you watch the news, you see poverty everywhere, oppression everywhere, fear of tomorrow, fear of what happened next. And we have no control over what happened next. And this triggers fear, doubt, worries. The Lord say this is the manifestation of the spirit of fear. Times of manifestation of the spirit of fear, fear everywhere. All sorts of fear. And one of the greatest fear is fear of tomorrow. So we are in perilous time. Perilous time, a difficult time to deal with. With the manifestation of the spirit of fear everywhere. Fear everywhere. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what will happen next. When you look at the news, when you listen to people every day, people say, oh, I don't want to invest because I'm afraid it will fail. I don't want to marry because they divorce everywhere. Fear, 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 and fear robs us of faith. Fear robs us of hope. Fear robs us of all opportunities. Today in this message, we are going to see how fear operates in our lives. How fear can affect us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But glory be to God Almighty, there is an answer to fear. What is the answer? The Holy Bible. Let me take you to the book of Matthew chapter 6. I start my reading from verse 25. Listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, not about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add any cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the valley. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of them. Verse 30. Now if God clothes the grass of the field, which they is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus continues saying, verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. But for your heavenly Father, but your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Verse 32. For all these things the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Verse 33 and last verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hmm. Listen to what Jesus said. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. The Lord says, instead of focusing on your present situation, focus on God. Focus on God. Focus on the kingdom. Because the kingdom of God is in our midst. God is with our wits. Faith focuses on God. Faith is now. Faith is not yesterday. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is now. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17, my righteous shall live by faith. The question is, why faith is now? Hmm. Because God is a God of now, not a God of yesterday. He's the God of now. 
He heals now, saves now, delivers now, rescues now, now, now. So what is now? The Bible says, all, all human beings will live in the present. We are here now. <laughs> the past is over. Future is mystery. Yesterday is history. Today is opportunity and tomorrow is mystery. Today is opportunity, mean today we have opportunity to act. Opportunity to take a decision that can change our life. There is room for improvement. There is room for salvation. There is room for healing. There is room for breakthrough. Now, today, today, today. No matter what your past is, no matter your past problem, don't look back. Look in front. That's what the Bible says. We should avoid the trap of looking back. Anytime something new happens, the devil will remind you of past failure. You look back and you're afraid and you hold your hands and you refuse to move. Fear robs us of hope. Now, the devil uses the situation to tempt us. How? The Bible says that there's no human being that does not have situations. Satan uses situation as a trap. As a bait to tempt us. When sickness hit the body, Satan wants to afflict the people physically or hit their finances, hit their body in order to cause you to doubt, in order to cause you to be afraid. Why? He has strategy and tactics. What is the strategy of devil? To create fear, to develop fear and to use fear to destroy your hope. To destroy your faith and cause you to abandon God and to fall into his trap. Looking at life, his adversities is a trap from the devil. What is your situation now? What is causing you to doubt and to worry about the future, about tomorrow? Is it a financial problem? Are you facing sickness, disease? Are you facing hardship, opposition, attacks, trouble in your work, in your business? Satan uses our situation as a bait to trap us. His purpose, his strategy and tactics is to cause you to lose hope, to lose faith and to fall in his trap by using a weapon, fear. We are living in the period of manifestation of the spirit of fear. So many kinds of fear, sorts of fear, so many types of fear and the greatest is fear of the unknown, fear of tomorrow. Fear of what will happen next. Causing people to doubt, to be afraid. What is his strategy and tactics? He uses situation as a bait. What is the bait? Satan uses sickness, disease, trouble. Immediately trouble come, he comes to you with his thoughts, to tempt you with negative thoughts. If sickness come, he will trigger negative thoughts. Sickness come, situation come, in order to break your focus. That's step number one. He wants to break your focus. As long as you are focused on God, as long as you are focused on the Bible, you have hope, you have faith, you can stand. But he wants to catch you from the source. What is the source? God, Jesus. We have no physical strength to overcome Satan. We have no mental strength to overcome him. He can only be overcome and defeated by the strength of Jesus at the cross. Jesus has defeated Satan for you. Satan knows it and we know it. You have to know it. The believer who walks in the natural is no match for him. Because the believer does not have strength as long as he operates in the natural. So Satan comes first to afflict. When he afflicts the body, you become physically stressed. Physically stressed. Because of pain. In the wilderness, the children of Israel was facing thirst. There was no water. They became physically stressed because of thirst. Once Satan breaks your focus on God, you begin to rely on yourself. And that's where the problem starts. When you rely on yourself, fear will come because you see impossibilities. So when you are physically stressed, Satan will come with negative thoughts. You cannot make it. You're going to die. You're going to fail. 
So now, as you continue focusing on the problem, he will continue to bombard your mind, your thought with negative fears of failure. And you become overwhelmed. But if you turn your focus to God, you defeat him. But if you lose focus on God, begin to focus on your situation, what happened? He will trigger negative thoughts. Those negative thoughts will overwhelm you. And you begin to see your situation bigger than God. When negative thoughts come, negative thoughts, fear come, and begin to increase the size of your problem mentally. If the doctor say, you have a tumor, you say, hey, it's a cancer, I'm going to die. Hypertension, hey, my family will die, I'm going to die. You begin to fear. To be fear. Fear will grow. Fear will grow. Because it increases the size of the problem mentally. You begin to see a danger that does not exist. And when this happens, you become mentally stressed. Number one, physically stressed. Number two, mentally stressed because of negative thoughts. And when you become mentally stressed, he go to the next stage. When you begin to think negative, it will affect your emotions. And then you become emotionally stressed. Why? Because you lose your mental sense of judgment. When you become mentally stressed, you lose the sense of reasoning. And when you lose the sense of reasoning, you begin to lament. And that will affect your emotion. From mentally stressed to emotionally stressed. When you are emotionally stressed, you begin to act out of character. When you are emotionally stressed, you begin to talk negatively. And when you think negatively and talk negatively, you will act negatively. And when you are emotionally stressed, you begin to be now spiritually stressed, which is the worst. When you are spiritually stressed, you cannot act out of faith. When you are spiritually stressed, you begin to look for alternative outside God. And you say, oh, I lost my faith. I don't have faith. At that moment, hope is gone. Faith is gone, you stop praying. You stop reading the Bible and begin to look for alternative outside God. That's the strategy of the devil. Satan continues to create situation to overwhelm you. I repeat, he uses the situation as a bait to tempt you. When situation come, if you focus on your situation instead of God, your focus is broken. And when focus is broken, fear starts. Fear starts by negative thoughts. The devil will come, negative thoughts of the repercussion of your situation. You will not make it. You are going to die. You are going to fail. Negative thoughts. If you continue focusing on your situation, those thoughts will continue to increase and you become mentally overwhelmed, mentally stressed. And when you are mentally stressed, you cannot reason well. When you cannot reason well, you lose your sense, intellectual sense of judgment. Your common sense is gone. And when you continue to focus on the problem, from mentally stressed, you become emotionally stressed because of that fear. At that moment, fear increases the size of your problem mentally in order to overwhelm you. When you're overwhelmed, it affects your emotions. When your emotions are affected, you act out of character. That's why we are exposed to things that are inconsistent with the word of God. Everybody faces it. No one is out of touch. When situations happen, don't allow situation to deceive you. Focus on God. Don't allow the situation to affect your feelings. If it affects your feelings, it will affect your emotions. When it affects your emotions, it will affect your faith. When it affects your faith, the battle is over. He has won the battle. His strategy is situation. Fear. When fear comes, to break your focus. When you break your focus, Negative thoughts come, and fear increases the size of your problem mentally. And then, you lose a sense of reasoning, and you begin to see your problem bigger than God. And fear prevents you from taking action that can change your life. After destroying your sense of judgment, you can't reason well, you cannot think well, and you begin to look for alternative outside God. So please, Jesus has given us the weapon to stand against this. When Moses was in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, at the Red Sea, life threat at the back, life threat in the front. And they begin to panic. But the Bible says, when you are between a rock and a hard place, you begin to sense the presence of God. That's what Moses understood. 
instead of panicking like his people was, he focused on God and God's ability. Faith in God lifts us up above the realm of our impossibilities and makes God's possibilities available to us by faith. Faith makes impossibilities possible. Faith makes us walk in the dimension in which God operates. By faith, you don't look at the situation, but beyond the situation, you see the result. Faith focuses on Jesus. So when you have situation, instead of focusing on that situation, focus on Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus said, Come to me, oh, you are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to me. Bring your burden to him. Bring your fear to him. Bring your trouble to him. He is faithful and true. And Jesus will put his peace into your heart. How? The scripture says in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7, that's the line of action to defeat the devil. Or every situation you may face this is the line of action, the battle line to defeat Satan, to defeat all your situations in your life. James, chapter 4, verse 7 says, first, submit to God and resist the devil, and he shall flee. Number one, submit to God. Number two, resist the devil. Number three, he shall flee. Let's take it one by one. Number one, when situations come in your home, in your family, don't panic. Don't panic. Keep your position, your solid ground. And submit to God. How? I submit to God by changing my focus from the problem to God. From the problem to God's promises. The moment you focus on God, on the word of God, and you meditate on it, you begin to see life clearly. When you meditate, revelation comes. God shows you your way out. God shows you what happened beyond the trouble. A man of faith is not carried away by situation, but looks beyond that situation. Beyond your trouble, their solution is. So when you submit to the word of God, we submit to God by allowing God's word in the midst of our heart, by meditating on God's word and declaring his promises. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, the giant Goliath came to the battlefield. He was so huge that all the army was shaking of fear. But the young rustic David came. Instead of focusing on Goliath, he focused on God Almighty. In 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 39, the king came and gave him his weapons, his armory. When David put them on, he said, I can't walk with this. A believer does not have strength as long as he operates in the natural. David removed all the armory, removed the sword, removed the weapon, and carried five stones in a sling. Said to Goliath, you come with me with a javelin and a spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Today, I will cut your head. Today, I will give your carcasses to the birds of the air. And every word David spoke became prophetic. And the battle followed his confession of faith. Therefore, whatever your situation is right now, speak the word of faith. Speak the word of life. When you speak God's word over your situation, you release your faith and bring God's power on the situation. When you speak the word of faith over yourself or over your situation, you have released your faith and brought God's power over the sea. So how do we defeat fear? At the early stage, at the early stage when situation happened, instead of focusing on it, focus on God immediately. That's what Caleb and Joshua did. When they sent the spies, they sent 12 spies, they went to the promised land. It was good land. But 12 spies went to check the area. When they came back, 10 of them gave a negative report. We saw Anakim, we saw giant. Oh my God, they were so big. We were like grasshopper before them and in our eyes. They were overwhelmed by the situation, overwhelmed by the adversary. Their focus was broken. And the Bible says when they were talking, the presence of God was on top of them. Because the scripture says there was a pillar of cloud that followed them from Egypt to the, to the promised land. They just have to look and see the presence of God by the pillar of cloud. But the report they heard, they were overwhelmed. Fear gripped them. They were overwhelmed. They lost the sense of judgment. And in fear increased the size of their problem bigger than their God. 
they see the problem bigger than God's ability. They were overwhelmed. They were spiritually stressed. When Moses went to the top of the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights, to receive living oracles from God for his people. When they couldn't see Moses, what happened? They became spiritually stressed and looked for alternatives. They asked Aaron to build an idol for them, the golden calf, and say, let's go back to each other. So people you have seen, don't allow your situation to mislead you. Don't allow your situation to create fear, and fear will break your focus. Fear will increase the size of your problem mentally. Fear will cause you to see your problem bigger than God, to destroy your sense of judgment and prevent you from living by faith. But when fear comes, you don't act faith. That's what the devil wants. The Bible is our plan and strategy against all the tactics of the devil. The moment you capture your thought, the moment God's word refreshes your mind, negative thoughts will leave you. The Lord be with your spirit. Viewers all over the world, 